right, we had a, uh, uh, an antenna problem that we were putting together. Already had the axes conveniently drawn out for ourselves. And then that was tied down by a couple of uh, cables. And of course, where they go determines the angle and uh, the tension and determines the magnitude of the forces those exert. So we had that problem, I believe. Look familiar? Yep. Oops. And as usual, not to scale. Two kilonewtons, if I remember, tension in each line. So we we're looking for the reaction forces on that um, on that uh, base. Does that sound familiar? Is that what we were doing? Maybe the arrows were drawn in a different direction. That all comes out in the wash, whether or not we get a negative sign. Did we actually get to the to the tensions in each of those? We did? Anybody work it out, check those? Alright, well once you get the unit vectors, then you just add up the forces, you'll have a resultant from that. Uh, each of the component directions has got to be equal and opposite to the reaction itself because then that, uh, that's what puts it in equilibrium. So, um, uh, 0.1179 newtons on AX and uh, it was in that direction. What? Uh, Kilonewtons. Uh, and it was in that direction. Is that right? Is that what somebody got? Okay. Um, y 4.77 and uh, opposite from what I've drawn there because with the forces down it's got to be up, so I'll put a minus sign in just to go with my drawing. Maybe, uh, maybe the signs were different, just because of the arrows when we started. And then this is uh, two, oh point two four three kilonewtons, and uh, I think that's the right direction. Yeah, something like that give or take a little bit. Remember the, the, the precise nature of the solution, how many significant figures aren't a great import because you're going to over design this thing by at least double anyway just to make sure it lasts. Okay, not too, too terrible. The hardest thing there I think is just coming up with the unit vectors on the forces usually. other question. Remember the the way that uh, antenna was attached at the base was a, a ball and socket joint and uh, I don't know of any around here. Uh, maybe if you look around and see some of these towers you'll see one that's done that way where the bottom is a ball and socket joint. That offers no moment here. Uh, what that means is if any one of the three wires break 
that tower is going to fall down. There's nothing then to hold it up. Whereas if, if we actually bolted it down there, supplied some moment reaction, then if one of the cables broke, uh, there's a chance it would stand up as long as the, the other loads weren't too great. So here's the question. Imagine they've decided to redesign on that base such that it's now a standard type of base where it bolts right down to the, uh, to the ground as most of them are. So it still has the cables, but now instead of that ball and socket joint at the bottom, it's now, they, in fact, maybe they came in, lifted it up, put in the new base, set it down, bolted that down, didn't even have to take the tower down. What happens to those? And what is the moment supplied by the, uh, the connection, the reaction moment at the, uh, at the base? Got the picture, see what the problem is, what we've done? Had previously that ball and socket base which allowed, you know, gave, just kept the, the base from going any direction, but it didn't keep the tower itself from turning, from twisting. Uh, they decided maybe uh, we just can't run the risk that one of those cables will break, the tower will come down. So we want to come in and bolt that base down right there in effect taking out the ball and socket joint and making it a, uh, just a, a kind of like a cantilever uh, attachment, an embedded attachment. What's that do to the forces and what is the moment that that base needs to withstand? Still, still the same tension in the lines. <clears throat> you know, if, they, if they raise the tower to put that in, the tension go up for a little bit, but then they let it back down so the tension's about the same, two kilonewtons. So now what are the reactions? This is the reactions for the ball and socket joint at the bottom. Now what are the reactions? And what is the moment reaction that that base will supply, needs to supply. Will that change things up a lot? Well, I don't know, your boss is gonna be satisfied with that answer. Well, the forces, the resistant forces, A, X, A, Y, and Z, stay the same. Yeah, those come from the tensions in the line. If those forces haven't changed any, then the reactions aren't going to change any. So those will be the same. So what's the moment at the base? And that's a full three-dimensional vector. So you can do it as components in the three directions or just single shot, find out the whole thing, but that'll be the that answer will be in components anyway. But how do we find that? There's a relatively easy way to find it and a relatively only minorly more difficult way to find it, whichever is your preference.
break break each of the forces into their component directions and figure out the moment supplied by each. Any any y component is going to be zero, so those will all drop out. That'd be maybe helpful. What's another way to do it? You wouldn't have to do any of that. Use the cross product because you already have these now as vectors. The only other thing you need is the position vector. So you need to decide what that is and then uh, set up the cross product. So what should the position vector be in this case? Remember, it's got to go from the point of interest to where? So it's got to go from A to some point. This would be, that's all the forces are coming from. The tensions are going through well, that that's point. That's what you want it anyway, right? It's got to be to some point on the line of action of the force, which means you could go to B, and you could do that for all three forces, or you could do it for one force if you want, and not the other. Or you could go to the attachment points, because they're also on the lines of action of the force, because that's where the cable goes. And then crossed with what? Not the reaction forces, because those go through point A. So the moment they cause is zero. We're trying to find the moment these cause. So R, A, and to B, E, C, or D, you can do for any one of the forces. You, can't, you, you can only use B for all the forces, because that's the only point where all the vectors go. So that might make sense there, just to keep from coming up with a bunch of different B vectors, I mean, uh, different position vectors. But cross with what? With what? The resultant forces of B. We're trying to find the moment caused by each of these tensions. So yeah, the two kilonewtons comes into it, but so does the direction. So you need to do that cross product for all three of the vectors. Or, what'd you say? I said the resultant of the vectors. Or the sum of all those forces. And just do it once. And that's probably easiest because uh, some of the vectors have some zero components, but not all of them. In fact, only, I guess, C has a zero component in the Z direction. All the others have full X, Y, and Z components. So you can set up the... I don't know if I have the resultant. Uh, yeah, I happen to. Uh, so what's that position vector then? Minus 0 0.179. The minus 
of course, is the direction in which the component works. So this will be plus 477, and this will be minus 0243. Got to really watch the minus signs, as usual. That doesn't go away. Is that right? I have a minus sign on all those in the book and the solution. Is that what you get for the components? Let's see. Um, no, it should be, yeah, it's obviously something wrong. There's got to be a negative Y component. So uh, I think I have a sign mess up there. On these ones. Yeah, it just comes from being sloppy with the drawing of the board when I've already done it. Arbitrary? Does it um, ultimately matter as long as you get the signs right for the rest of the problem? Like if you're consistent with your signs, or does it make a difference? Yeah, as long as you're consistent, it should come out okay. But I think between what I originally did and what I have at the board now, I don't think I was consistent, and I didn't do the change well on the fly. What I've got, yeah, I had each one of these. Uh, backwards. I had each one of them in the positive direction originally. So let's go back to that. Then the signs match. Now we're okay. Yeah, because certainly AY should be positive. Alright, so you can do that cross product. Not a whole lot's left over. There's no Y component because we have two I and K zero components. So that takes out the Y component automatically. Yeah, there, 
there there was when we summed the moments with the ball and socket joint the only moments we had were those caused by the forces this there was no reaction moment available down here and the moment caused by the forces isn't zero so this would not have been in equilibrium they would have tightened those up and pull over the tower anyway so it had to be this type of design where it's actually bolted into the bottom or you got to go back to the cables and either move those or change the tensions until there's zero moment caused by the forces and thus zero moment required at the base. Can you sort of tell that just by the positioning of the cables in the drawing? Like, if you will, if they're all equal tension and they're not sort of equally spaced apart. Yeah. It's not going to be able to Yeah, when you see towers, you see the the three cables come off and they're evenly spaced around, 360 degrees evenly spaced, same distance out, because then they don't need that moment at the bottom. So, yeah, we maybe if we'd sat and thought about it a little bit on Wednesday, we would have said, wait a second, you know, I'm worried about this. My loved ones are, are climbing that tower to base jump right now. All right, any questions about that before we go to the next problem? This one's a good one. It's not three-dimensional, so that's easier there. Um, but it's also got a lot more engineering in it, a little bit more. It's actually what's called design for human factors, which means not just looking at the forces, but looking at what those forces are going to mean <coughs> to somebody actually using the product. So I have here... I have a handout for you, just uh, with the drawing already. But we're going to look at the design of a one of those little roll-on behind luggage carriers that, that uh, the person in front of you has and it's wobbling all over and driving you nuts. You're not ready to kill them. But that's a human factor too. That people are in your way. They bug you. All right, and here's here's the drawing for you, so you don't have to uh, worry about. And I just I just sketched this out real quickly in the photocopy. I was pretty rough sketching my freehand style that you're also used to. Oh, I don't know which row BJ's in. I guess I assumed you're in that row. Alright, there we go. So now what I want to look at are uh, given a certain loading. So we're going to put the center of gravity, if it's assumed it's loaded, at a certain place. Now that's, that's variable because as the designer, we have no idea where people are going to put stuff. Uh, generally, it makes sense to put stuff a little lower, as we know, because the higher that goes, the greater moment arm it causes, the more likely that thing is to tip over. But the dopes out in the street don't know that, so, so they might, for example, put their baby all the way up here at the top, and, and their, their tissue papers and, and underwear at the bottom. They shouldn't do that. You should put the baby at the bottom and then lighter stuff on top of it. That's just common parental sense. But not everybody has that. So we're going to look at some of the variables. We can certainly change the height. We can change dimensions if we wanted to. What we want to look at, though, of course, is what is the uh, effect of the person using it, the person who's going to exert this force on it. What are they going to see? What are they going to feel as they as they go about using it? So I'll give you a couple of numbers with that that we'll use because uh, uh, as a real design problem, there's variables all over the place with this. So we got to nail it down a little bit. So we'll take the weight of the carrier to be 50 pounds. The uh, angle. 30 degrees, and that's 
taking uh, you know an average person and about where their hand's going to be and about how big the carrier is going to be. So we we figure we want that to start with. A is eight inches. B is sixteen. And D is forty-eight inches. Alright, so to start with, we want to find F. Now, don't forget there's a, a little wheel down here of some radius. I didn't give you that. And C, C is just to help label some points. That's the, the the axle there, A is there, I don't know where capital B is. It's always they packed it. That's baby. Capital B for baby. It's been packed. So that's where that is. Alright, so just as a starting point, and then we're gonna look more at the uh, we're gonna adjust some of those those uh, parameters and see what the effect to the user is. It's very easy to say, oh, we'll just do all those things and everybody uses it just that way because we designed it that way. And taint the case, because what if you have twins? Yeah, you, well, if one you have to fold in half. <laughs> Alright, so take a couple minutes, figure out what uh, what F is, and then we'll take it from there. And we'll get part way into this, and then we'll uh, have to go a little bit more with it on, uh, on Friday. Have a good Monday. should be able to do this in a single equation. Which is awesome. Well, I guess that makes sense. We've got F. The only thing we don't know is its magnitude. We should only need a single equation. Can't just sum the forces though. We don't know what the reaction that's more unknowns. Only one F. That's all I asked for.
moment about which point, though. That's always a question. This is a little help to you. We'll take F as going right back through C. So if this thing was standing up straight, point A would be right above point C. That's that little hook in the uh, handle is supposed to help. You need a little space for that thing to retract, but you want this out a little bit. I'm going to take that to go right back through C. Now those are all design factors. You got to fiddle with all those things, but take that to be the case. So sum the moments about C, and you should get the one equation you know of need. But you could sum them about some other point. Remember, the, the, a good design is not going to rotate about any point as the person's using it, except for that little bit of time when they start up and they have to lean it over a little bit to get going. Until then, certainly if they're standing at the counter, saying, can you call security? I can't find my baby. That's how often you pack something. Forgot to pack it already. See, the Home Alone movies would have been nearly so funny if they just put the baby in the carrier, like in the in the luggage right away. That's why all of us other parents did that. Movie. So that wouldn't happen to us. First thing I pack is the baby. It goes to the bottom. two components, break the force in the two components. This component is not to contribute any of the moment about C because it goes right back through C. So you should have only, for the moments about C, so this component of F and then the two components of W and you know just what the moment are because the given. So we should be able to set that one up. We want that moment to sum to zero. If not, the carrier is twisting, which means the person has to wrestle with it. alpha so that would be F cosine alpha times D is the moment contributed by F assuming that the other component goes through C has no moment arm sound reasonable 
Now the downward component of F, or the, the component towards the base, also contributes moment in that direction. So we can put it on the same side of the equation. What is that? W sine alpha B. Does that sound right? W sine alpha times B. Does that look okay? That's the moment contributed by this component. It's W it's the side opposite that angle. So it's sine alpha and it's no it's moment arm is A. Right? that distance. So it's not B, it's A. Does that sound right? Are you guys already on the weekend? Am I too late with this for the day? I was working on the weight ones while or A and B when you explained for it. Did the F cosine of Alpha D. Where did you assume that it was alpha? Alpha is right here. This is alpha. So if we let the carrier down, alpha decreases. If we let the carrier down, this angle decreases, so it must be alpha. Okay. Does that sound right? It's easy to make a, a little goof on these things looking at them. That's okay. You have a nice big drawing there. I like big drawings. Big enough to carry twins. And then the other component of the weight is in the opposite direction. So we can put it on the other side of the equation. That's W cosine alpha. And that's B. And so the only unknown in there is F. So we have W, alpha, D, whatever. As just an initial design, we're going to vary some things now. In a second. BJ, okay? set up all everything else is known just plug it in and see what f equals hardest part now is just make sure your calculator reads degrees because that's what alpha's in
make fun of her, and then we'll put the shade down. Come on, all the stuff's known. There's this about as simple as equations get around here. Setting it up was well, a little tricky visually. Somewhere in that, that vicinity. 
but you can pack all kinds of stuff in there. This 50 may not be a very useful number. So what we're going to do is call, it's called normalizing the equation. What we're going to do is simply divide through by W. Because that's the, the thing that's probably of these the most variable. A and B will change a little bit, but W could change a lot, anywhere from maybe 20 pounds to 80 pounds. So we'll divide through by W. That allows us then to solve this equation not for F, but for F over W. And we don't have to do any refiguring because it's just 12 over 50 for our example. But that's 12 pounds exerted by the user over 50 pounds of load. What's 12 over 50? It's what? 0.24. So even though it's tough to look at that number and say, oh yeah, that's pretty good for humans, it is an easier number to look at as we adjust some of the other variables. 0 0.24 pounds exerted for every pound of load. And now we can adjust some of these parameters and see what happens to that ratio and the specific value of the load is out of the problem. And we can look at just what happens to that. We can, uh, as we adjust those things, see how that changes. And we're going to be concerned with things like uh, where does it become a maximum? We could be concerned with things like uh, does that turn to negative? What's that mean? If that ratio turned to negative. It's possible, and, and you can imagine this, if you start tilting it up to, at a point, it's going to tilt itself. You'd actually have to push down to keep it in that position. Maybe we're not going to get anywhere close to that, but maybe, maybe we are. So we're going to look at that ratio, F over W, normalize the force exerted to the pound load, and we're going to vary alpha. So. Let's, uh, let's take that out because we're not going to be concerned now with the specific weight of the problem. And we're going to vary alpha and see what that does for the user. In other words, if you're standing there at the counter trying to get to the flight rebook, you don't want to be fighting with the carrier. It's just going to be a big distraction. You're going to end up dropping it or pushing it back or losing it or something. There. Babies might be crying by now because they've been in there since since Orlando. So we're going to do that. We're going to add one thing to it. We'll, uh, we'll put H uh, equal to about 36 inches. And leave everything else the same and see what happens to alpha as we vary F and W. And then look at that in terms of uh, users' users' uh, satisfaction with the, with the object. So, we already have, have this equation. I'll help you with it a little bit. It's just a little algebra on that solution we just had. So you can start from here. B minus A tan alpha over D. Now, as alpha changes, H is going to change. So you have to get that, that, uh, that contribution in there. Yeah, that looks right. I mean, that's, just, that's just the uh, one we just solved for 12 pounds. Now as a variable form. So H and alpha are going to change together 
as functions of d. So you need to relate those so you can take more to the unknown doubt, uh, h and alpha. Like I said, I didn't mean to put in the h equals 36. What are we going to do with that? Well, we can, we can take it out later, so the only variable we have then is alpha. size of the wheel is also a factor, and we'll put that as uh, 3 inches. What's that mean to the user, though, the size of the wheel? Anything? I mean, does it matter to the user if they got a 1-inch wheel, which would be cheap, or a 6-inch wheel? What? Yeah, it has a little bit to do with that. You know, you got to lean the thing over before you can get going. But, go on, you cyclist guys. Of course, they will roll over cells easier. Huh? Yeah, a larger wheel rolls over bumps easier. So, if you've got to go to the curve. But, if it's too big, then that raises the center of gravity and becomes even a little bit tougher to handle. So, uh, Something reasonable, three inches is actually pretty big. But remember, we're just we're varying some numbers. We want to see how this changes as alpha changes uh, in the problem. Which isn't a big deal. It's mostly right there anyway. We've got B and A, uh, D. D, D, oh, we had the D is 48. I think, now that we said H is 36, we want to take that out of there. Yeah, oh, it's, it's not a big deal. Because change that now with H and R, the radius of the wheel. Because the H we don't want to vary since that's the assumed height of the user. We can't ask the person to change height. Can't ask them to keep moving their arm up and down. Okay, so look at that a little bit on the weekend. If you can get this, it's very interesting to graph this ratio as a function of alpha. You've got all the pieces. It's mostly just, uh, mostly just um, uh, algebra, and so you can uh, look at that graph, and then we need to look at that and see what the deal is for the user.